Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Fullmoon Adventure Club and today we're going to be testing out this little portable solar generator. This is called the Safari LT. This guy's insanely portable, uh, weighing around 10 pounds. So you can pretty much take it anywhere, it takes up a very small amount of space, but it has a lot of power packed inside. It has 450 watt hours of power in the batteries and it also has a 500 watt continuous pure sine wave inverter so it's safe for all kinds of sensitive electronics and it also takes 140 watts of solar or charging, which makes it incredibly fast to charge. Uh, one of the faster ones on the market for this size. So we're gonna be putting it to the test to see what it can actually do. I'm gonna be trying it against my giant double door LG refrigerator, just for fun, my uh, 60 inch flat screen TV, a whole bunch of camping gear and coolers and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, if you do end up being interested in one of these, I will put a link in the description down below that will save you 15% on all Lion Energy products, which is a pretty big deal. Or you can call in and use the code word adventure and save yourself some money. So now let's get into the tests and see what this little guy can actually do. All right, so test number one, let's say you have a power outage and I wanna be able to watch TV and have internet for the entire house so everybody is entertained until the power comes back on. What we're gonna be running for this test is a 60 inch LG TV. It also has an Amazon Fire Stick in the back, so you can pretty much watch any programming that you want, Netflix and et cetera, off of that. We're also gonna be having a uh, router connected to that so that we have good range throughout the entire house. And that's gonna be boosting the signal of our internet, which is coming off of a Verizon Jetpack, which is a MiFi uh, unit. But this would also work if you just had a modem connected because usually in these situations, you're still going to have internet, you just don't have power to run your modem and your router. Usually these are one and the same device. Um, and all of this is gonna be powered off of the Safari LT. And we're gonna plug all this stuff up. I've got everything turned on and everything connected. And now we're gonna kinda of see how long that actually runs for. Okay, so we are running the 60 inch TV, our Wi-Fi router, our Verizon Jetpack is charging. We have a fire stick in the back of the TV. And let's see what we are using right now. 82 watts. So that should last us 5.2 hours. So let's give that a shot. We have total internet for the entire house. So everybody can use their phones, tablets, laptops, watch TV, anything like that. So we're gonna see if it lasts uh, 5.2 hours like it says it will. And that will be awesome during a power outage. All right, so we were watching TV. All of us had internet, the entire house, just like normal. We were playing on our phones and tablets, and of course, if those got low, we could power those off of the Safari as well. But I left it alone to save the parameters of the test. So with all of that stuff going, we started that test. I started setting it all up and turned it on at 4.20 p.m., and it made it until 9.09. .09. When the TV turned off, I looked at the clock, 9.09 .09 p.m. So that is four hours and 50 minutes. So that's awesome. That's, that's usually gonna get you through a normal power outage. And um, I thought that was a really cool test. So we had internet and TV, we could have charged our phones. That's pretty darn cool. And if you were doing this during the day with 100 watt solar panel or 140 watts max, you could have used that all day to provide internet. And then when it came time for night, you would have had about five hours of battery to run into the night and then you could have started all over the next day. So I think that's a pretty cool test. Now we're gonna move on to a bunch of like camping gear and little outdoor coolers and a bunch of little stuff. So let's jump over there and check that out. So this is a Dometic cooler. It's not a compressor based cooler. It basically drops the temperature 40 degrees below ambient temperature. I filled it with some food, berries, hummus, cheese, some drinks, a water bottle with no ice in it, some ketchup mustard, typical stuff. And we're gonna see if it's able to run this cooler. It operates at about 64 watts. So I'm gonna turn on the Safari LT, and then we're gonna go ahead and turn on the DC output because I am using that, it's a little more efficient. And we're gonna be drawing about 64 watts. And now we're gonna hook up the solar panel so we can help it keep up with everything during the day. These solar panels are really nice, everything is well labeled. It comes with a ton of extra cord. So you can put this in the sun and leave the cooler and the Safari in the shade. And basically you just take the output side, you plug that directly into the cord, and then you're gonna plug that directly into the Safari LT uh, import for a solar. Now once we do that, we're gonna switch over there now. Once I go ahead and plug that into the solar auto charge port right here, and you can see we're drawing 55 watts off the cooler right now. We just plug this guy in and as soon as we do, we're gonna have our input watts show up and we're pulling 64 watts from that. It is kind of an overcast day. And after we lost sun about five hours later, 
Um, I went ahead and checked all the food and it was very cool to the touch. It was probably about 42 degrees because it was kind of warm outside and it was in the sun. But now that we're only pulling in five watts, you can see that we have 6.6 .6 hours left to go off the battery, which is great. So it'll run it for about seven hours just off the battery, which is great. So we're gonna have cold food all the way into the night and we can start the whole process over again tomorrow. So that's very, very cool. Touching all the drinks and the food, everything stayed pretty cool. It was probably, like I said, around 40 degrees in there. Not quite into the 36 range, but great considering it was sitting in the sun. So that was a very, very cool test and you could pretty much run that indefinitely off one panel. And then you're gonna have seven hours running this little cooler at night. So I think that's incredibly cool. Now let's add a whole bunch of other camping accessories on top of running the cooler to really push this a little bit further and see how it runs everything. All right, so let's take a look at all the stuff that we're currently running here off this little guy. We've got our electric cooler, which is a pretty big deal. You know, that's gonna use like 64 watts all by itself to keep our food and drinks cold. We have an Amazon Fire tablet. We have a solar lamp that's charging up the internal battery. We have a small battery charger for double A's and triple A's. GoPro Hero 7 Black. We have our Garmin GPS. So you can see that. Yeah, that's on. And then over here, we do have a really big laptop right now. And so that's gonna be another really big power dry item. It's charging up. In the down below, we are charging our Ryobi battery. See if you can see that blinking. Yeah. So we're charging up a lithium battery for our Saza. And we've got our 100 watt solar panel bringing in some juice. And of course you can put 200 watts of solar on this because this guy's gonna take 140 watts of solar. And as you can see, it's only really getting about half right now because it's a little overcast. I wish I could help you see somehow. There we go. So we're drawing 52 watts from the solar panel and we are consuming 146 watts. And this will take 140 watts of solar. So everything that we're running right now, we could just run off of the sun. And we've got about three and a half hours of battery life on this guy. If we weren't bringing in 140 watts of solar, which we're not, if we could add another solar panel, we'd run all of this and then have all of our battery power for when the sun goes down to keep running all this stuff. So that is very, very cool. So this is a new test. I wanted to show off these cool LED lights that I have down here that came with the unit. They're all plugged in along with all of this other stuff at night, uh, battery chargers and et cetera. I did fully charge the unit before I did this shot. And we are taking around 130 to 200 watts, depending on what batteries are taking charge at what time. But you can see there, it's gonna last around three and a half to four hours. And of course, once it's done with that, all the things that have internal batteries are gonna keep going. Um, so, you know, that lithium battery, the laptop, the fire tablet, uh, the GPS, all their batteries will be charged and they will continue to run after that. But I think that's incredibly cool that you can run all of this stuff for like four hours at night and they're all gonna be charged up and, and keep on going. Um, 200 watts is what we're getting up to at the highest point here, down to 100. But this does have a 500 watt pure sine wave inverter, which makes it safe for all these small gadgets. And also it's a lot of punch. So now what we're gonna do is kind of jump over and see if this will run a giant double door refrigerator that's gonna push the inverter a little bit harder. But how cool is running all that stuff at night with a little tiny 11 pound box? Okay, so here's a test to kind of push the inverter. Uh, this fridge runs at around 500 watts and it is a huge LG double door refrigerator. And I've, you can see the uh, power's actually off. I just plugged in my extension cord down there and we are gonna see if this very small, lightweight little guy can handle a power load like this. So we're going to turn it on and I'll show you the uh, the fridge kind of kick on when I do it. Let's see. Turning it on. There we go. Fridge is on. On 392 watts. 
and it says it's going to run that for about you know an hour while the compressor's pulling so we'll give it a shot here the time is 1206 we'll, we'll see how long she runs this big old refrigerator and as you can see the little inverters on we're plugged in and now the refrigerator does have power and we will see how long that runs okay so she just shut off it is now 558 so that's about six hours that it ran this gigantic fridge so impressive that's awesome i didn't think it'd really be useful in a power outage for a refrigerator but six hours is enough for a lot of um small power outages so way to go little guy okay guys how about this Got my bistro lights plugged in. Turn on the inverter. How about running all of these LED bistro lights? For about seven hours, six and a half hours, 64 watts. That's pretty darn cool. seven hours with this much light for something that is incredibly lightweight i could pick it up with a pinky that's very very cool and that is a lot of light how neat as far as the solar panels are concerned guys they seem very well built they have corner protectors nice heavy duty latches on the suitcase um, they have nice wiring, everything is labeled, um, and they use roof grade solar panels for this. So they're designed to be mounted to the roof in, in hail storms and everything else. And he even said I could walk on it. And I was like, well, are you sure? Because I'm 6'5 and about 270. I'm a really big guy. And he's like, yeah, go for it. So here's some footage of me walking across the panel. And there was absolutely no damage to these whatsoever with me walking all over them. So they definitely pass inspection as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the Safari LT, would I recommend it? Absolutely, as long as your criteria is correct. Um, if you're running CPAP machines, electric blankets, all the stuff that I showed you in my testing, perfect, awesome. If you're trying to run a microwave at 1500 watts, obviously not. So if you're trying to run really big appliances that are really power hungry, this isn't gonna be the device for you, but it's so lightweight and portable and it runs all the stuff that I just showed you. So use your imagination. If that's in your criteria, then it's absolutely crushing it. In my opinion, I've enjoyed using it. Seems well built. If anything goes wrong, I will do an update video and let you guys know, of course, but I've been loving it so far. If you want to save 15% on all Lion Energy products, which is a pretty big deal, click the link down below and that'll save you 15% or call in and use the code word adventure. My name is Jim with Fullman Adventure Club and until the next video, thank you so much for watching and happy camping.